What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Josh V and in today's video we're going to be continuing our talk about spot free car wash finishes. If you didn't see the last video, I'll link it down in the description. After this one, go check that one out. In that one I go over everything involved in deionized water, how to get it, uh, which tanks give you the cheapest results. Now deionized water is my preferred method. That's what I use in my professional car detailing business. It achieves zero parts per million in your water and that's what gives you a very, very perfect spot free finish. Now, out of, the, out of the wall in my shop, I get about 406 parts per million. That's total dissolved solids in the water. But then you wash your car with it and it dries in the sun. Well, it's not dissolved anymore. Now it hardens up and creates these water spots, right? There's stuff in that water that create those water spots. You don't wanna do that. They can potentially, depending on how hard the water is, it can potentially uh, etch into the clear coat and it's a nightmare and you don't wanna deal with it. So in today's video, we are going to be looking at a very, very, very cost-effective solution. Now, this is something that I saw on another YouTube video. I saw someone doing this, and uh, I've seen quite a few videos about it, actually. It's about a $30 or $15 uh, inline water filter that is used for RVs. They achieved good spot-free finishes in their videos, so they say, and I wanted to test that because I was just thinking there's no way I could achieve that with how dirty my water is here or how hard it is. So let's go ahead and jump into it. We're gonna test this out and see how it goes. All right, so these are the filters here. Now you can find a bunch of different ones on Amazon, um, but these ones were great because it was a, a two pack for about 30 bucks. I've seen other ones that are just a single pack for about 30 bucks. So um, but basically it's a carbon activated filter and it's used to reduce odors, uh, a bunch of different things to remove a bunch of contamination from your water. Now, similar to a soft water system, they reduce the hardness of the, of the water, but they don't remove the total dissolved solids. So I wanted to test this. That's why in my head I was watching those videos. I was like, there's no way this can work. So I wanted to get it and actually test it out. So step number one is we hook it up to our water source. Now it's cool that you can either use a little hose or you can just hook it right up to the, to the spigot. Uh, it works out really, really well. Um, but you do want to let it run for one minute. You want to hook it up, let the water run out for one minute. It states right on the directions of the, uh, of the packaging um, and that is just to let all of the carbon and whatever else is in there kind of filter through so you'll see right when i turn this thing on the water comes out black right off the bat so you definitely don't want to use this without you know letting it run and letting it filter through first okay so we've let the water run for one minute through the tank uh, i'm going to take my bucket now i'm going to fill up that bucket using this filter and i'm going to test with my tds meter that tests how many parts per million are in the water and see what it does all right guys so for this first test i actually turn it on put the bucket under, turn it off, let it all go into the bucket, and then test it. I got zero change. I'm still at 406 parts per million. That's after one minute of running through the, the little canister. And again, water going straight into it, turning it off and having it finish there. In my head, I thought, well, maybe it's because as I'm turning it off, the, the neutralization from the carbon filter isn't working as well. I'm getting uh, some leftover residual stuff. So I decided, let me turn it back on, run it for another minute, then I'll put the bucket under, and then I'll take the bucket out before turning it off to see if that makes a difference. And after that, after doing it that way, it did reduce the parts per million of total dissolved solids from 406 to 393. Still not great. Again, deionized water takes it down to zero. That's where I wanna be. But it did reduce it to 393. So I'm like, okay, this is, this is working. So I did that a couple more times and I got it down to 382. So 382 from 406. So we're, we're, getting, we're making progress, right? Now, the next thing is I'm thinking, well, maybe just this thing just needs to really filter through. So I turned the water on for 10 minutes. I know it's a little bit of a waste of water, but I really wanted to see if these things would work to get some good solutions for you guys. So I let it run for 10 minutes. Then I did the same solution where I, as it's running, stuck the bucket under, pulled the bucket out, and then turned it off. And I got all the way down to 365 parts per million. So like I said, guys, we reduced it by about 50 parts per million. So if you're in an area that has relatively clean water and you're running 50 parts per million out of your tap, this filter may be a perfect solution for you guys. That may be what happened in those other videos. Um, but for me, running at 400, ish parts per million straight out of the tap. That's a lot of things to filter through and this little carbon filter isn't doing the job. It's reducing it for sure, but it's not getting it down to zero where I wanna be. Now, like I said, with my deionized water tanks in my past video, I have a little meter on top. As soon as it goes to one or two parts per million, the light turns red, meaning I need to change out my tank. Even at, even at two parts per million, I'm changing out my tank to, get, to, to continue to get an absolutely spot-free finish. I don't think it's that necessary. I think you can run between two and five and still be okay. But again, for me as a professional, I do a lot of really high-end cars, 
black cars, I work out in the direct sunlight, I want that to be zero parts per million. Okay, so now to test the 365 part per million water that came out of that filter. I went ahead and dipped in a spray bottle into the water at 365 parts per million. Um, and I'm going to put that aside and now I'm going to take the rest of that water in the bucket and I'm gonna rinse down a panel. Um, this is my control panel that I use for everything. Now there are three spots on this thing that are ceramic coated and you'll see that when I throw the water on. As you can see here, this is actually coated in three different spots, crystal stearum light, Max Shine's graphene coating and C Quartz UK. Uh, the Crystal Serum Light and the Max Shine flashed off really, really quickly. Um, and then the C Quartz UK was just a little bit behind, but still working really, really well. Okay, now that I rinsed off the panel, I'm gonna take my spray bottle and just lightly mist the whole thing. That's gonna create the, the effect of, of water beading, um, just similar to like if you're using a pressure washer on it, this is kind of how they always finish out. So I'm gonna let that sit on there and I'm gonna let it air dry in direct sunlight. Um, now, when I'm doing this, this was in the, later in the afternoon, about 5.30 p.m., and uh, it was probably about 65 degrees out, so it wasn't a really hard, hot flash. Um, it was actually just kind of nice out and had to wait a good 30 minutes for that panel to dry, but we keep inspecting it throughout the whole time. Okay, so at first inspection, guys, you can really see the areas that are not ceramic coated definitely have water beating, strong water beating. You don't want that on there, that's a bummer. Um, so this filter, for me and my purposes, uh, does not work. For you, it may. Like I said, if you have a lower uh, uh, to total dissolved solids in your water out of the tap, then it may work. Again, just go get one of these little uh, TDS meters and I'll have them linked in, in the description for you guys along with these little filters if you're interested in them. Um, but basically, the panel definitely has water spots. Now, these ceramic coated areas are definitely fighting it off much, much better. They're taking longer to dry um, so they're not letting it just absorb into the panel. And uh, I don't see any water spotting yet, but we're gonna continually just monitor it as it dries up more and more. Now again, the ceramic coated spots are doing much better. Max Shine and the Crystal Serum Light are doing fantastic. Sea Quartz UK, you can see more water spotting on than those two. And then actually on the Crystal Serum Light side, there's a little dry spot there. And you can see there is a tiny bit of water spotting in there, but way tighter water spots, and they don't look like they're gonna be actually holding on like the regular parts of the panel are. Okay, now to test the rest of this panel, I'm gonna take my Max Shine uh, twist loop uh, drying towel. Just gonna dry the whole panel really quickly and then re-inspect. And after a quick wipe like that, guys, it's actually looking pretty good. All the ceramic coated areas are looking really good. Uh, the parts that weren't ceramic coated definitely have water spots that are on the panel that are not coming off from a basic wipe. So from there, I'll take my ceramic detail spray from Technician's Choice. This is my favorite product. You guys have all heard me talk about this. Link down in the description before you guys below. Um, but I just lightly mist it onto a microfiber towel. Now for this test, I'm just using a basic Costco towel. We'll do another video uh, in the future talking about Costco towels versus some other towels, but um, in this, video we're just using the Costco towel lightly misting it and then wiping down the whole panel now for our final result after the wipe down with the ceramic detail spray everything's looking pretty good the area that was not ceramic coated at all definitely has water spots they're not as bad now after we did that uh, wipe down with the ceramic detail spray but they are still there now the areas that were ceramic coated look great again guys however this was relatively good temperatures for washing a car outside. It was, you know, pretty good conditions for it. If it was a hotter day, I don't know. It might have been even worse. Just wanted to give you guys another solution. I don't know, it, like I said, if you have a low parts per million in your water out of the tap, this might be a decent solution for you. You're still gonna wanna work quick and try and dry it off as fast as you can, but it will reduce some parts per million of total dissolved solids in your water. So that's it, guys. I hope that helps. Please make sure to like the video. Make sure you're subscribed. Turn on that notification bell, and we'll see you on the next one.